probably for over a decade now, I've been writing about the mitra clip, and it has been approved by the FDA. And we're here talking about a paper, Improved Functional Status and Quality of Life in Prohibitive Surgical Risk Patients with Degenerative Mitral Regurgitation Following Transcatheter Mitral Valve Repair with the mitra clip System. And I'm with uh, Dr. D. Scott Lim. And University of Virginia is where you're from. This paper is being presented here at TCT. First, tell me about the, the approval by the FDA. What is it approved for? Sure. It's been a long time coming. We're really excited that it's here. It's, you know, it's been about a decade in different trials and, and working with the FDA. And yes, just the other day, we now have an FDA approval with an indication for patients who are at prohibitive risk of open heart surgery with primary or degenerative MR. So I think we're all quite excited about that. Now, the mechanics of the valve are quite different from, say, the aorta. So it's been a little bit more challenging to, to work in, correct? Absolutely. I think, unlike the aortic valve and aortic stenosis, which tends to be more binary, this is truly a spectrum. And I think it's taken us a while to also appreciate that and appreciate that even within certain subtypes of mitral regurgitation, there's a lot more that we need to learn to figure out appropriate patient selection and, therefore, getting to what's appropriate therapy. Now, in your particular paper, what did you look at? So what we looked at is the same population of patients that make up the indication that the FDA just granted. So originally, with the mitra clip, we did a randomized clinical trial, Everest II, which looked at all comers, both all comers in terms of mitral regurgita regurgitation type, as well as the risk profile in those. And with time, we've learned that the true sweet spot for this device appears to be in those patients who are really quite high risk for open heart surgery. That's what this manuscript, this paper looks at. How many people were involved in this study? The, the number of people is just countless in terms of there's a number of sites, over 30 sites throughout the United States involved in this. And at each site, not only the primary investigator, but it truly was done in a collaborative process between cardiologists and surgeons, as well as on multiple levels. So I, I can't count the number of people. It's taken us, it's a really a community effort. In terms of this particular paper you're presenting here, you're looking at about how many years worth of uh, follow-up? So, all of the patients that were enrolled in this particular patient study came from either the Everest High Risk Registry or the Realism Continued Access Registry over a course of a number of years. The average follow-up exceeded two years in those patients. And I think the data that we're, we've gotten out of that is quite encouraging, looking at terms of the safety profile as well as outcomes and quality of life measures. In terms of TAVR, in the United States, the guidelines certainly outline the fact that it, this is a team approach and should be taken care of and the decisions need to be made by a team. Is this the case here? Absolutely. And I think uh, the other element of the team is not just the cardiologist, the interventional cardiologist, not just the surgeon, but also the imager, so the non-invasive uh, echocardiologist, because I think much of our understanding of the mitral valve really comes from echocardiographic imaging to understand the pathology and understand how the therapy, in this case the mitral clip, will interact with that pathology. Can you describe the specific patient who might benefit the most? You're saying high risk. I mean, you've obviously seen a few patients in your time. What do they look like? Absolutely. So we, uh, the term that's in the FDA indication as well as in this paper is patients who are at prohibitive risk for open heart surgery. That doesn't mean that they are inoperable. It just means that the expected benefit from open heart surgery is outweighed by the risk to that patient in terms of outcomes, quality of life, so forth. So that's why the surgeon and the uh, interventional cardiologist need to work together to determine that patient's Absolutely. needs. Yes, and I think that's even more important when we expand it and go past degenerative MR and start looking at the other half, which is functional mitral regurgitation. Then we're bringing in the heart failure cardiologist as well, and that's oh, nice. yes, and that's what we're currently studying in the COAP trial, which is a randomized trial looking just at functional MR, and hopefully that data will come along as well. Well, if you're looking for the paper, it is published alongside uh, in Jack Interventions uh, to coincide with a meeting presentation here at TCT. For uh, D. Scott Lim, I'm Rick McGuire, and this is for CardioSource World News.